Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. In 2013, this House passed the DNA Bill, and in 2014, it was assented to by the President. This historic act paved the way for the expansion of the National Forensic DNA Database and improved regulation in the field of DNA forensics. Most notably, this act made it possible to compel violent Schedule 8 offenders to submit their DNA profiles to the database so as to establish any past or future crimes. In 2016, a gentleman by the name of Sikangele Mki was arrested for assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. His arrest and subsequent sentencing in 2017 triggered a DNA test in terms of the act, and his profile as a convicted offender was loaded onto the National Forensic DNA Database, thereby linking him key to 30 counts of rape, 27 counts of kidnapping, and 12 counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances. Mki, seemingly a first-time offender who was set to serve a five-year suspended sentence, was ultimately sentenced to 15 life terms and an additional 120 years in prison because of the work done by this House and countless others in civil society in bringing the DNA Act to life. Mki was exposed for the violent criminal he is because the DNA Act required that the National Commissioner of Police must, together with the National Commissioner of correctional services ensure that a buckle sample is taken within two years of any person serving a sentence of imprisonment for a Schedule 8 offence. Regrettably, this transitional provision in the Act expired in 2017, and the state could therefore no longer compel violent Schedule 8 offenders to submit their DNA profiles. An amendment bill was drafted to correct this issue, but has been ignored by Cabinet since 2017. In 2019, I asked the Civilian Secretariat for Police what the number was of convicted Schedule 8 offenders who had not yet submitted their DNA profiles as a consequence of the delay in processing the amendment bill. I was told it was more than 47,000. More than 47,000 violent criminals who could potentially be linked to multiple other crimes, thereby incurring harsher sentences, may well be released after serving their sentence without ever having their DNA sampled because a simple amendment to the DNA Act has been gathering dust in Cabinet since 2017. The reason given to Parliament for this unfathomable delay is that the Minister of Police, together with the Minister of Home Affairs, are exploring the possibility of creating a national DNA database which would require every single South African citizen to submit their DNA profile to the state. This delusional DNA dystopia in which the minister lives, besides being completely unaffordable, would be entirely unconstitutional and is certainly no reason to delay a critically important amendment bill, which is now four years overdue. Now, this debate today is not about politics, but it is about executive accountability. And because the minister has failed so spectacularly to resolve the crisis over which he has presided, the buck today must stop with the president. Fundamentally, though, this is a debate about justice and why the failure to take forensic sciences seriously has led to a miscarriage of justice for thousands of victims of some of the most violent and heinous crimes in our country. It is about ensuring that there are consequences for violent criminals and that they are not put back on our streets to rape and murder with impunity. This debate today is about five-year-old Chantal Mokwena from Rocklands in Nelson Mandela Bay who in 2019 was brutally raped and killed by a man out on bail for rape. Chantal Mokwena was raped and killed on the 1st of August, and six weeks later, there had been no arrest. In an act of violent desperation, Chantal's mother, with the help of the community, caught the alleged perpetrator, cut off his penis, and put it in his mouth. Chantal's mother was swiftly arrested, imprisoned, and separated from her breastfeeding infant. After more than two years, Chantal Mokwena's DNA samples have still not been analyzed due to the lack of consumables. Since Minister Pele has been the Minister of Police from February 2018, appointed by President Ramaphosa, he has presided over an explosion in the backlog of DNA case exhibits from just over 7,000 in 2017-18 to over 225,000 this year. That is nearly a quarter of a million, a more than 3,000% increase in the backlog under his watch. It has never been this bad before. 
In January and February this year, not a single DNA sample was processed due to the lack of consumables. In response to this alarming fact, the minister said, no one has reported it before, and one only heard of it by chance. This is proof that the minister does not take the DNA crisis seriously and is paying lip service to the president's commitment to halve violent crime in his term of office. Critical vacancies in the SAPS Forensics Division as a result of the internecine battle between the minister and the national commissioner, combined with catastrophic contract mis mismanagement, has led to a backlog which is now completely out of control. Thanks to the work done by the Portfolio Committee in Parliament in highlighting these issues, we are starting to see a faint flickering light at the end of a very, very dark and long tunnel. The reality though is that even if every vacancy is filled and every contract is awarded, the backlog will not be addressed within a year because every single day, more and more case exhibits arrive at our laboratories. In order to address the backlog and restore the integrity of our forensic capability, we have to do the following with urgency. The president must instruct the minister to bring the DNA amendment bill to parliament immediately so we can do our work. SAPS must ensure that all vacancies are filled with urgency and that all outstanding contracts are expedited. SAPS now needs to partner urgently with the private sector and our university laboratories to address the DNA backlog by the end of this year. To ensure that this crisis never happens again, SAPS needs to guarantee more transparency for victims and the public at large to be able to monitor the progress of their cases on a live DNA dashboard. The DNA backlog was a completely avoidable crisis if sufficient care and attention was paid to this issue when I first raised it in 2019. Mr. President, you have ignored my letters. You have ignored the cries of victims of violent crime like Chantal Mokwena, and you have ignored the failure of your minister to prevent the situation. Mr. President, you are complicit in this unprecedented crisis. I thank you.